Hey guys, welcome back to Presume Legal. I'm Misha Janice and welcome. This is another video in the Justice for Dan Markell series. And I was just going through the Markell Adelson divorce file in Leon County, Florida, where they litigated their divorce. And I figured I would just record this video um, real quickly, hopefully, of me going through the marital settlement agreement. Now, this was the agreement that Dan and Wendy came to after many months of litigating the divorce. And then after the fact, after this agreement was entered and it was made into a court order, it was still the source of a lot of litigation after. And we heard about some of that in the trials, the Charlie Adelson trial, Wendy was asked about it quite a bit. And it came up also a little bit in Katie's retrial as well. So before I get into some of the trial testimony surrounding the some of the issues that are going to be in this marital settlement agreement, I just wanted to go through the actual agreement so you guys could kind of get a feel for what the terms of that agreement were, and then we can, in a different video, see actually what the issues were that arose after this agreement was entered. We already know about the Dan's motions, the Sunshine's motion, as well as the motions for contempt and sanctions against Wendy, all kind of arising out of this settlement agreement. So let me share my screen. Let me uh, show you what I'm going to be reading from and we can get right into it. All right. So this is the marital, marital settle, settlement agreement, excuse me, entered July 31st of 2013. I'll be pointing out certain sections and just sort of skimming over other sections. I don't think it's really necessary to go through each and every paragraph here. Um, but I do want to point some particular sections out to you. So this marital settlement agreement is made and entered into this 30th day of July, 2013 by and between Wendy Adelson, the wife and Daniel Markell, the husband. It then goes into some of their background, when they were married, where they were married, and how long they lived together, the two children that they have, that there were irreconcilable differences arising between the party and that a petition for dissolution was filed. So let's get into the actual terms of the separation. At all times hereafter, the husband and wife shall be entitled to live separate and apart from each other, free from any marital control of the other party, and neither the husband nor the wife shall molest the other, interfere with the peace and comfort of the other, or compel or seek to compel the other to cohabit with the other. Next section is parental responsibility for the minor children. We know that this was a huge issue, um, and it could have been the one and only um, motive behind the subsequent killing of him. So share parental responsibility. They're going to have shared responsibility. Um, they agree to acknowledging that each of them has an individual contribution to the making, continuing development of the children, and that the best interests of the children will be served by an active, continuing, close relationship between the children and both parents. The parties shall all time conduct themselves and their activities in a proper manner, which will promote the welfare and best interests of the minor children. While the minor children are residing with a party, that party shall make all reasonable efforts to facilitate communication between the other party and the children. Telephone calls and correspondence, electronic or otherwise, are to be encouraged by the parties, never discouraged. The children should be given privacy regarding their telephonic and written communications with the other parent. We know this is going to be one of the first areas that Dan raises in a subsequent motion saying that Wendy is, is not complying with the terms of this agreement, especially as it relates to communications with the children. 
while they're in her care. The parties shall consult with one another on all questions relating to their upbringing, including, but not limited to, religious upbringing, discipline, financial, moral, social, recreational, and legal matters, school and educational programs, changes in social environment and non-emergency and emergency health care, both medical and dental. Each party shall have an active role in providing a sound moral, social, economic, and educational environment for the children. Now, we already know that this is definitely going to come up in Dan's subsequent motion. Um, and if he had lived, it would probably come up in an even later motion had he survived the fact that Wendy was going to be enrolling uh, one of her sons in a school. There was something about she entered the child into a school lottery and the child was accepted into that school. And so we know on the morning that Dan was shot, he was actually on the phone with an administrator from that school speaking with that person, I think for the first time, trying to get a lay of the land, trying to find out and learn about the school that Wendy was intent on enrolling the child in. She did that unilaterally and he was speaking with them to, you know, see if he could get on board with that decision. Next, each party shall, in the utmost of good faith, encourage and foster the maximum relation of love and affection between the minor children and both parties. Neither party shall in any way impede, obstruct, or interfere with the exercise by the other parent of his or her right of companionship with the minor children. Neither party shall at any time disparage, criticize, belittle, or otherwise ridicule the other parent in the presence of the minor children. Each party shall instruct the children to love and respect the other parent and shall promote a loving and caring feeling for the other parent. This is going to be brought in when Dan brings up the Sunshine's motion. And the fact that Maybe it wasn't Wendy directly disparaging, criticizing, belittling Dan, but she was allowing a means to do so based on what the children were saying, that their grandmother, Donna Adelson, was making disparaging remarks about their father, about Dan, and he wasn't happy about that. F, the parties agree that each parent shall be entitled to participate in and attend, regardless of whose time sharing it is, activities in which the minor children are engaged, such as, such as religious activities, school programs, and graduation, and sports and other extracurricular activities and programs. Each party further agrees to keep the other party informed about such scheduled activities so appropriate plans can be made prior to such activities. Each party shall have access to records and information pertaining to the minor children, including but not limited to medical, dental, and school records and religious and extracurricular activities. At all times, whether in town or out of town, each party shall keep the other party advised as to where the minor ch children shall be, whether during residency, vacations, holidays, or otherwise, and shall provide the other party with a telephone number where the children may be called and an address where the children may, may be located. This is another area that Dan raises in that uh, that same Sunshine's motion. He was saying that Wendy was taking the kids away and he had no idea where they were from day to day when they were with her. Each party shall immediately notify the other party of any illness or emergency that may arise while the, ch while the children are in his or her presence or control. And the party who is so notified shall have immediate physical access to such child, regardless of where he or she may be. Each party shall be entitled to authorize emergency medical treatment for the minor children. Uh, each party shall attempt to ensure that the children are allowed unhampered contact with and free access to the other party. Each party shall encourage a feeling of affection between the minor children and the other party. Neither party shall do anything to hamper the natural development of the ch minor children's love and respect for the other party. The party shall attempt to work cooperatively in making future plans consistent with the best interests of the children and in amicably resolving any disputes that arise. The next section goes into the parenting plan and the time sharing arrangements. Um, it looks like they both had equal 50-50 time sharing. 
which is what Dan had been asking for. It was not what Wendy was asking for. Wendy was asking for um, more than 50-50 time splitting. This just kind of looks like the scheduling of what the sharing would be throughout the school year, throughout the summers, um, holidays and vacations. Dan was taking the kids up to Canada that August, after which he would return and be with Wendy It goes into more holidays, the sharing of the kids, winter breaks and spring breaks are getting divvied up. Mother's Day and Father's Day, they get to spend that day with that parent. Both parties have a right to spend time with the children on the children's birthdays. Dan was to get the children for two consecutive weeks in August of 2014. Passports. Wife and husband will each hold on to one passport and tender the passport to the other and sign all given permission letters for travel with children to Canada within three days of the other party's requests. So long as two weeks notice is given to the other parent regarding plans to go abroad with the children. All other international travel requests, unless the parties otherwise agree, shall be submitted to the parenting coordinator or another mutually agreed upon third party. The next session, section goes into general parenting provisions. Who makes day-to-day -day decisions? The parent in whose care the children are shall have the responsibility of making day-to-day -day decisions regarding the child's care, maintenance, and welfare. Uh, it talks about flexibility um, flexibility in scheduling the kids to be with a particular parent, special occasions or events that aren't specifically delineated in this agreement. Child care. In the event the parties are in need of child care or babysitting for the children or will for any reason not be able to personally parent or care for the children, they shall afford the other the opportunity to care for the children. If one cannot provide the care, the party exercising time sharing shall be responsible for the cost of the needed additional child care. This is something that Dan raised in the Sunshine's motion. He was alleging that Wendy was letting her parents uh, care for the children when she was not able to care for the children, which would not have been in compliance with this agreement. He said that he had the right, the right of first refusal to take care of the children. And instead, she was skirting him um, that right and just allowing her parents to care for the kids. Unless or absence of daycare, the parties agree to be equally responsible for the care of a minor child during those times when the child is sick or daycare is not available for whatever reason. Now this goes into the parenting coordinator. The parties agree to the entry of a stipulated order of referral to parenting coordination with the order to be prepared by Thomas Duggar, attorney for the husband, and the cost to be borne by the husband. Uh, the parties agree to the appointment by the court of Amanda P. Wall or any other qualified person agreed upon by the parties as parenting coordinator to assist them with resolution of any parenting issues they are unable to work out between themselves. Uh, Ms. Wall's services shall be shared equally 50-50 by the parties. So this was, I guess, supposed to be sort of like a ongoing mediator for parenting issues or scheduling issues that they couldn't work out by themselves instead of having to run to court for every um, for every issue that they were having that they couldn't reach an agreement for, they would reach out to this designated person or another qualified person that the that they both agreed on to assist them in resolving their issues.
Child support, payment of support. Husband is deemed to have paid in full for all child support through August 31st, 2013, commencing in September and continuing on the first day of each and every month through the end of April 2016. The husband shall pay to the wife the sum of $841 per month as child support for the party's minor children. Beginning on May 1st, 2016 and continuing on the first day of each every Every month thereafter, child support paid by the husband to the wife shall decrease to $631 per month. I'm not certain why the decrease, but if I had to guess, it might have to do with the fact that both children at that point would be able to go to full-time school and they wouldn't need to be in daycare at all. Of course, that would be a savings, a monthly savings um, <clears throat> not needing to pay daycare. All right. Children's expenses as child support, the husband shall pay 65% and the wife shall pay 35% of mutually agreed upon daycare or after school care, extracurricular fees and expenses and summer camps. Day-to-day -day expenses for the children, such as food, lunch money, spending money shall be paid by the party with whom the children are residing. If Dan doesn't pay his child support, in a timely way and he becomes delinquent. This is saying 3.2 is saying that um, Wendy had the right to participate in the court depository program or request the entry of an income deduction order. And that would be the beginning of the process for garnishing wages, garnishing Dan's wages. Medical insurance, the husband was to maintain full force and effect for the children of the parties, his current or equivalent medical insurance coverage. And the wife was to maintain dental and orthodontic insurance for the children at her expense. They were going to have the same 65%, 35% split for non-insured medical and dental expenses. And as far as tax exemptions, um, they were going to each be able to claim one child for federal tax purposes. Termination of child support. The parent's obligation to provide child support as set forth herein shall terminate upon the occurrence of any of the following. A, the death of the child or either party. And... Uh, Apparently the word party was left out of the document. So it had to be handwritten in. And we see that the word party was initialed by both Wendy Adelson and Dan Markell. Child support was also going to terminate upon the child's completion of high school or attainment of the child's 18th birthday, whichever happened last but it wasn't going to go past the child's 19th birthday. Child support would also terminate if the child became self-supporting by permanent full-time employment or if the child got married. Alimony, no party was going to be getting or paying, accepting alimony. They both waived and relinquished all rights to every type of alimony. Property settlement, equitable distribution. The parties agreed that the following division of their marital property is fair and equitable, equitable as between them and each party accepts that property to be distributed to him or her in full and complete satisfaction of all marital rights and to the marital property. The wife's real and personal property was going to include her region's checking account and any and all other bank accounts in the wife's sole name her Schwab investment account, her Schwab, Schwab Roth IRA, her Schwab traditional IRA, her TIAA CREF 403B retirement plan, her Honda Odyssey minivan, that minivan that was spotted on Trescott right after Dan was shot. Yeah, that one. And all of the wife's personal property currently in her possession. Dan's real and personal property was going to include his uh, CCB business checking account 
and any and all other bank accounts in the husband's sole name. That CCB business checking account, I believe, was his checking account related to income from the Prof's Law blog. His Schwab investment account, his State of Florida Deferred Compensation Plan, his TIAA CREF retirement plan. He got to keep his Honda Accord, all of the personal property in his possession, all of his non-marital or premarital assets in his possession. He got his bike back, the bike that Wendy took when she pillaged the house when she was leaving it. So he was supposed to get that bike back. He was supposed to get all furniture and household furnishings located in the marital home or in the husband's possession and control. So all the furniture that she took when she left the house, she was going to be able to keep it. The wife shall return safe deposit box key, house keys, car keys, checkbooks, credit cards, debit cards, and any other items related to finances to the husband. The husband was going to, he was going to be ordered to make a lump sum payment within 60 days of the agreement of $120,000 in equities to be transferred from his Schwab account into the wife's Schwab account. The marital home, the husband was going to have sole ownership and possession to that jointly titled marital home. The wife was going to quit claim her interest in the property um, at the same time that she signed this marital settlement agreement. The husband was supposed to remove wife's name from the title to the property and anything else related to that. And he was supposed to ensure that she was going to be basically wiped of all liability, indemnification, hold harmless from everything related to the house. So she wasn't going to have any duty to pay the mortgage, pay real property taxes, homeowner's insurance, or anything else related to that home anymore. The next section is covering marital debts and other obligations. So they agreed that each of them would be responsible for any other, for any debts and obligations that they incurred since their separation in September, 2012. Attorneys fees and costs. Divorce is not cheap, right? So payment of attorney's fees and costs by the husband. Within 60 days, the husband was to pay the wife $10,000 directly to the wife's attorney. Actually, not not directly to the wife, to the wife's attorney. And... um, Payment of attorney's fees and costs in the event of enforcement of this agreement, the prevailing party shall be entitled to recover reasonable attorney's fees and costs in having to bring any um, additional litigation surrounding the enforcement of this particular agreement. And we know that there definitely were enforcement motions surrounding this agreement And we never got to the bottom of them because uh, Dan was killed. This is interesting that they include a reconciliation clause. The parties recognize the possibility of a reconciliation. Can you imagine if that had happened? I have heard of that happening. It does happen from time to time. I do know a couple couples, a couple couples that have uh, separated and or divorced. And at some point later, they got back together. So it is their intention that reconciliation, temporary or permanent, or a further separation after any reconciliation shall in no way abrogate or affect the provisions of this agreement concerning the settlement and disposition of property rights between the parties in their respective realty and personality as set forth in this agreement. So um, I think that's all that I wanted to point out to you guys. The very last thing I just want to bring to your attention is the fact that our girl, Donna, 
She was right there by Wendy's side the entire time, this entire divorce. She was right there supporting Wendy, whispering in her ear, you know, coming up with strategies. We've heard, we've heard these strategies. We've heard of Donna's strategizing, you know, what needs to be done from the bribes to, you know, things to be done to the children to all the reasons for the relocation. The, the Adelsons are spending so much money and it's not fair. Donna was behind all of this. And we see that because look who signed as Wendy's witness. Donna Sue herself. Right there next to Wendy, along with Wendy's um, attorney. She was right there the whole time, happy to sign on this dotted line to end the marriage that Andy had gotten herself into. So that's all that I wanted to show you in terms of the marital settlement agreement. I will have another video, another point of time going over some of the motions that occurred after this agreement was entered, trying to enforce the terms of this settlement agreement, calling for sanctions and, you know, censures, all kinds of things because of the terms that were in here that were alleged to have been broken, not complied with. So we're kind of building on the foundation here. <laughs> <laughs> working our way through the divorce file. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the provisions in here that we see. I don't see any of the terms in here as being like super extraordinary. Um, yeah, I mean, none of it seems super extraordinary to me. I guess the only thing would be the after filed motions filed by Dan alleged that there were inducements for him to sign this particular marital settlement agreement and those promises and, and conditions that he signed this agreement were not complied with. They were not fulfilled. And so after this agreement was entered. Um, it was not the end of the story, not at all. So we'll see that as, um, as time goes by, I will have another video for you detailing those oceans soon. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again until the next drop.